Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Slightly, slightly shorter contribution from the minister that I was anticipating. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to rise uh, to do this final contribution in this debate on the Members of Parliament uh, Remuneration Amendment Bill. Uh, and I want to just first of all say that the mechanism that this House establishes for uh, determining how MPs' pay should be set is a very important one constitutionally. Uh, it is not good practice for the Parliament itself to be uh, voting on, debating uh, and setting effectively the, what, what the taxpayer should pay us for doing this job. It is important that we put in place a robust mechanism that removes those decisions from this House and places them with an independent body that can make those decisions rigorously and independently, because I think the public of New Zealand would like to have that reassurance that, in fact, we aren't here uh, feathering our own nests, debating things that are going to be in our own best interests, and that there is someone independent making decisions about what a fair rate of pay for members of parliament should be. Because, in fact, this is an important issue. Now, no one here is arguing for a, a significant pay increase at the moment, but ensuring MPs receive a sufficient and appropriate level of remuneration is actually important for the transparency and integrity of the democratic system of government. It is actually the guards that we have against corruption, making sure MPs are appropriately, appropriately remunerated for the job that we do is one of the ways that the public of New Zealand and the taxpayer can have uh, the reassurance that we are working for them and not for other people who are paying us and, and giving us money for the work that we do. And the only way the public can have assurance that that is what is happening is when, they, when those decisions are made completely independently of this House uh, and that there are robust criteria for doing so. It has been apparent for some time now that there were issues with the criteria that the uh, authority had uh, in determining what MPs' pay should be. And it's high time that the House resolved those issues. Uh, this is not a good process for doing that. We've had five years of concerns. Uh, we've had five years where, debate, where the criteria could have been properly and appropriately amended without the need to resort to urgency. It's therefore unfortunate that we find ourselves now in this position where if we don't conclude this debate this week under urgency through all of its stages, uh, then MPs will get the significant pay increases next week that we're here tonight trying to stop from happening. That could have been avoided if this had been dealt with through a much better, uh, more rigorous and proper process. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened, and therefore urgency is the only way now to stop those pay rises going through and being in EMP's bank accounts next week. Now, we have listened very carefully uh, on the Labour Party side to the debate, uh, and we've uh, engaged with that in good faith, uh, with the principle being that we wanted to stop those rises going through, and we wanted to make sure that the criteria was amended in a way that is robust and that will provide an enduring and independent solution for how MPs' pay was set. That is the reason that we voted in favour of the legislation and in favour of the urgency, because without the urgency, as I've said, there would have been no way to stop those pay increases. However, uh, having listened to the debate, we did vote in favour of the supplementary order paper put forward by Materia Ture that would have resulted in the legislation being passed now, only stopping those pay increases and leaving for another day that decision around what the criteria, the new criteria should be. Because we don't think that this is a good process. And we would rather that that went through a more rigorous process, particularly, uh, and this is a big issue for me, I would like to ensure that the remuneration authority, the experts on this, the people who have to actually implement it, are able to provide some scrutiny to, that, to the legislation that we are now passing. They have not had the opportunity to do so, and they will not have the opportunity to do so. As a result, we cannot be sure that the legislation that we are passing now is actually going to do what it purports to do uh, in the short term and in the long term. There's a possibility that in the long term this will give us bigger pay increases than the existing criteria that we have that we are now replacing. And that's one of the reasons why there needs to be greater scrutiny over these matters so that we can be sure that the bill does what it is supposed to do. We don't have that because of the way this uh, process has been rushed. Uh, one of the concerning things uh, that came, became very apparent during the debate is that, in fact, this debate is only partly about MPs' pay, and actually the wider agenda from the government is to suppress the pay overall across the whole of the public sector, including 
teachers, doctors, nurses, police, prison officers, uh, and so on. I could go on and on through all the professions. It's very disappointing to hear uh, members from the National Party uh, referring to those who work for the good of the public, uh, want, who want pay increases, referring to them as union thugs. Oh, I think that's very disappointing. I think after a long period of time where the pay rises haven't kept up with inflation, uh, and in fact in real terms their salaries have gone backwards, uh, I think it's fair enough that they're asking for a pay increase. I heard Bill English uh, claiming uh, just, I think it was either today or yesterday, claiming that in fact teachers, for example, have had pay rises above inflation. So I went and looked at the top of the teacher salary scale. These are the most experienced teachers, the longest serving teachers, uh, and the ones who don't have any other management roles or whatever, who are just simply at the top of the teacher salary scale. Here's the, here's the real numbers. In 2009, they were paid $68,980. Uh, and as of last year, they were paid 72646 So let's be clear, these are the most experienced teachers. That is a 5.3% pay increase. What did inflation do during that time? It was 9.3% during that time. Actually, in real terms, a teacher who has no management responsibilities, who's at the top of the salary scale, has gone backwards in the last four or five years under this national government. And yet Bill English is saying that they shouldn't be getting any pay increase at all. They have seen the real value of their incomes eroded during that time. And so the government are up against the wall this year when a lot of these uh, big public sector collective agreements come up for negotiation because actually people have been promised for five years by this government and maybe longer that there will be jam tomorrow, but jam never actually comes. And they're saying that they've had enough of that. And I think that's quite understandable. So I think it's wrong that the government uses this debate on MPs pay to try and suppress uh, the debate over wider pay issues within the public sector. I don't think MPs should be getting significant pay increases of the magnitude that were recently awarded, but I actually do think it is probably time to look at some of those pay rates in the public sector because there has been a lot of belt tightening. Uh, finally, in, the, in this debate, I just want to make one last contribution. <clears throat> And that is around the actual formula that this bill has now established, which links MP increases to the overall, uh, the average increases within the public sector. As I have raised during earlier parts of this debate, uh, that can create some unintended consequences because the overall average increase in the public sector can be distorted by higher than average increases in managerial salaries and those at the top of the salary scale and lower uh, increases for those who are on regular and low incomes. Uh, and as a result, our pay will go up while the people who we're most interested in protecting, the people who are out there not getting pay increases, their pay continues to go backwards. So this formula doesn't necessarily deliver on the sentiment uh, and the value proposition that the government are putting forward. One of the reasons why this rush, rushed process is not acceptable. So the Labor Party has supported this through simply because we had no choice. It was the only way to stop those significant pay increases going through next week. Uh, it's not good process. The government could and should have acted on this much, much earlier. Jonathan.